Good morning to you. I hope you're all well. I'm Richard Simons and today is going to be one of our convoy comparison videos. The best way to get an exact comparison between efficiency, real world range and charging speed is to take three cars and drive them at exactly the same speed on the same day at the same time. And that's exactly what I'm doing with these three Tesla Model 3s. The three versions of the Tesla Model 3 currently for sale in the UK. Each one varies in price, each one varies in battery, but we're gonna see what they get in a real world scenario on a chilly day like today. This first car here, this is the standard range. At the moment, it's priced at 43,000 pounds. It's got the 18 inch wheels with the aero covers on and it's two wheel drive, rear wheel drive on this one. It does have a heat pump fitted as standard now. And this one does have the double glazing as well, like all the refresh cars. Sorry, there's some people just shuffling crates for no reason over there. I'll carry on, hopefully you can hear me. So it's the cheapest one in the range, but I've been driving this over Christmas. It seems super efficient. And this is why I really want to compare what it gets in the real world. This is the four wheel drive, has about a 75 kilowatt hour gross battery. So about 70 kilowatt hours usable, roughly speaking. Again, heat pump car, it's a refresh model, the current version for sale in the UK. And it's a good car. So let's see how that compares. Bigger battery, four wheel drive, two motors, and about 8,000 pound extra. This is about 50,000 pounds new. And then we have the performance. So again, a little bit more money. These are about 60,000 pounds new at the moment in the UK. Again, the current version, bigger battery again. Each one of these has different batteries. This one is the current version with the 82 kilowatt hour uh, gross battery from Panasonic. So again, slightly bigger than the others, but the Model 3 performance is considered um, less efficient. Mainly probably because of the wheels, to be honest. They're just bigger wheels, 20 inch Uber turbine alloys, and they just cost it some efficiency. So how would that compare to the other two? Oh, again, current version, heat pump is fitted as standard. So different, three different batteries, three different cars. Let's see what they get in the real world. And the only way really to compare that is to drive them side by side at the same time. If you drive them on different days, you will have different variances in traffic and speed and weather, and that all affects efficiency. So the only way is to drive them on the same day at the same time at the same speed. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. As you can probably tell of my wearing a hat and rubbing my hands, it is a cold morning. It's been zero degrees. The benefit of an electric car when it's plugged in is you can have it set precondition for the time you're going to leave. And that's what we've done with these. So no defrosting of cars. The car will charge up, preheat the cabin, defrost the windscreen, warm up the seats ready for departure. So these cars are all just finishing their preconditioning just now and um, are ready to go. The Performance and the long range with their batteries, they recommend a 90% daily charging limit. You can go to 100% charge when you're about to do a long trip, so that is fine, but you don't do that every day. Typically you charge to 90%. So these cars are charged at 90% and preconditioned, ready to go. The standard range with this new LFP battery though, this you just charge to 100% every day. It's a different battery chemistry and 100% charging is what the car uh, needs, likes, wants. And so 100% charging every time, every day, so you've got Although it's a smaller battery, you've got all the battery kind of usable every day. So if you didn't plan to do that longer trip, you've got it available to you. And again, so that one is now 100% charged, also preconditioned. So these cars are all ready to go. It's only just above zero degrees now, but it is dry. The plan today is to uh, leave here and I want to cover about 170, 180 miles and go to a V3 charger site, probably rugby services, where we can plug all three cars in. So on that journey, we can see what the energy use differences are. We can calculate the real world range based off of that. So if it was 100% for each car, and then we're gonna be able to compare the charging speed. So this is interesting. They've got three different batteries. So they're charging different profiles and you know, the charging speeds on a colder day. So that's the plan. It's cold, let's get in the cars and we'll head off. Okay, so we're part of the way along the journey now, and I'm just gonna grab some efficiency numbers. So the most efficient so far is the standard range, which is that one over there. 259 watt hours per mile. 
I've had that more efficient, but we're driving real world and it is very cold. 259. Then the long range, 264. So actually not far behind the standard range for efficiency. And then the performance model, 295. So sub 300 watt hours per mile, which I think is pretty good. So they're all doing pretty well. Um, we're going to have something to eat and then carry on, do some more miles and head to the chargers. And then we're going to set that the cars can precondition and preheat for charging. So when they're preheating for charging, it means they can charge faster, but that will increase the consumption. So it affects the efficiency. And that's why we're reporting that now. So I'm going to eat. <laughs> Okay, we've arrived at Rugby Services and it's freezing cold, it's raining, it was snowing just now, so I'm going to try and keep this as quick as possible, then we'll plug the cars in and uh, record how long it takes them to recharge. Before we do that, right, uh, what's the efficiency, what's their range, how much battery did they use? The standard range, the cheapest one, the LFP battery, that used 85% of its battery to cover the 168 miles to here today. So 85% used, an average of 270 watt hours per mile. So capable of much better efficiency i've got much better efficiency but these are almost worst case condition scenarios it's freezing cold it's wet it's snowing so not too bad 270 watt hours per mile used 85 percent of its battery that would give it a real world range of 198 miles in theory 100 percent to zero the long range surely a much better range right so that averaged 296 watt hours per mile so yes it was a bit less uh, efficient but it's still pretty good, it's still sub 300 watt hours per mile, which is very good. Uh, used 75% of its battery, bigger battery, remember? Uh, so that would give that car, real world today, 224 miles of range. So 26 miles over a standard range in these awful conditions. Right, let's go on to the Model 3 performance at the end. That used up 77% of its battery. It averaged 315 watt hours per mile. So a bit less efficient again, but actually given the conditions today, I don't think too bad. I feel like a weather reporter, a news reporter out in a storm somewhere. It's that cold and horrible out here. And I'm about to get run over. These dangerous conditions are reporting. <laughs> okay, Model 3 performance, 315 watt hours per mile. It used 77% of its battery. And that would give that car a real world range today of 218 miles. So in the real world, yes, a bit less range than the long range not as efficient even though it has a bigger battery doesn't quite compensate for that and that's largely down to the wheels not as aerodynamic basically okay so what we're going to do is plug them in and get them all charged back up to 90 percent which one's going to charge faster which one will be quicker we're going to travel back home now it's about 150 miles just to go directly back home but 90 percent as we can tell would be plenty for each one so let's get them plugged in and we'll record some charging speed and I'll see if we can put a little graph against that as well. But for now, I'm going to get out of this rain. Okay, so we're charged up. It didn't take too long at all, even in these cold conditions. So um, we've been recording all the timings and everything like that, how long each one's taken to replenish enough charge to carry on driving for another 100 miles, another 150 to get back and to replenish what they've used today. So let's uh, get that back to the office and do it there because it's too cold here. Okay, so let's try and give you a bit of a summary here. It's uh, much more pleasant inside here, um, zero degrees Celsius, which worked out to about 32 Fahrenheit, by the way, for the kind of temperatures in that day, and it was just cold and miserable. Uh, so I wanted to come back and do calculations, and I've been writing all over this glass here like I'm on an episode of CSI. Here we go. Yeah! I wanted to make the focus on this about real world scenarios, so the real world range capabilities and then the real world recharging time to get to uh, certain distances in these conditions. It will be different again in summer. But let's bring up a table below now, which will detail here the calculations. And there's kind of two levels to this, one with the efficiency without kind of heating for supercharging, and then with the, um, uh, with the preheating for supercharging, which obviously costs it efficiency. And so in the real world, the difference there would be, you know, you're going to supercharge and then just go home. So you don't need to do that preheating process again. Or um, if you're going to go on and supercharge again, you know, for us in the UK, that would be going on into Scotland from the south coast. Or perhaps if you're driving across Europe, when you would need to supercharge again, and therefore that would affect the range. Hence the two different values down there in that data below. 
But what you can see there, what's interesting is the range between this new standard range and the long range and the performance isn't vastly different actually, is it? Not too much in there. And that standard range, I, I've driven that a fair bit recently and it's certainly capable of more range, they all are. I know the long range very well, I've done many miles in that. So um, let's just try and summarize it then. Uh, let's bring up a graph here, uh, which is gonna be the percent of the battery that was added. Just for reference, so we can see here the standard range is actually uh, adding its uh, battery state of charge slightly quicker, but they're all pretty similar in its, their charging curves on the day. The peak charge rate we had from the performance actually went up to about 180 kilowatts briefly. So though it had to add more energy, um, it did it quicker for a little bit of time and that, therefore they all panned out about the same. But let's now go to the range added as we were charging. And this was what took a few calculations. I didn't want to just take what the car says because I wanted this to represent real world capability based on the usage driving up there. And that's why you wouldn't need to normally do this kind of stuff, analyzing stuff. So don't think EVs are like this, but we wanted to get it for a slightly more technical aspect of it here without going into too much geekery and numbers. I've got a nice big spreadsheet here with everything on, but it pans out like this, adding range, all very much the same with just the standard range tailing off because that says the battery is getting more full, the charge rate slows, of course. But in terms of range being added, all really similar. So roughly speaking, in such conditions, to add 100 miles of range, about 10 minutes. To add 150 miles of range, about 20 minutes. So we're all really identical for that timing. And then if you're gonna do 168 miles, and I'll pick that number just purely because that's what we covered going up there. And that's what you'd want to do if you're doing a really long journey um, and you're gonna drive for another three hours, two and a half, three hours before charging it again. Again, not too dissimilar. I've also included in the table below kind of my estimate based on my root experience of driving these cars for the last couple of years uh, with the long range and the performance, the difference between winter and summer kind of range, what they would pan out to comparatively speaking between these cars driven at the same time, same conditions. So I hope that all makes sense. I hope that's been interesting. Uh, I also put there um, the energy used displayed by the car and the energy put back in according to the car from the superchargers and the cost of that. I don't normally do much about the cost of charging because costs change. Even in the UK, different supercharger sites cost different amounts. But based on that day, for your point of reference, uh, 33 pence a kilowatt hour, which is what it was at rugby that day, that's what each one of those cars cost us to charge up. Of course, most of your driving is just at home where you have cheap overnight tariffs and such like. You might even have solar and battery and it doesn't cost you anything. So that's just for the you know, sort of public rapid charging, in this case, those supercharger sites. So interesting, isn't it? There's not a vast amount really in the real world between standard, long and performance. You do, of course, gain a bit of extra range with that long range and four-wheel drive, and it's a bit quicker. Um, and then with the performance, savage performance and track mode capabilities and such like as well. Um, but each one of those batteries compensates for uh, the difference in the efficiencies of them. Not too much in the cost difference, enough to buy yourself a coffee if you've used a standard range as opposed to performance that day. So there we are. I think we're calling it a wrap. So there, it's probably enough data for this test at the moment. But of course, there'll be more to follow. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Give us a thumbs up on this video and leave your comments and opinions down below. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our videos. If you like our content and want to see more, don't forget to not only subscribe, but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded. Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news stories and things as we go on each one of those channels.